what is the error here? Save data, stream. Just making sure everything's okay. That should be all right. So let me just double check, um, go live. We are going live guys. We're making sure everything is starting out. So you are live guys. So welcome back guys to another episode of Box Mining. I just have to make sure that I'm live because like YouTube is a little bit super wonky this morning, but thank you guys for tuning in. Today is not a normally scheduled episode actually. Today we're having an impromptu live stream episode yet again because there's so much happening in crypto right now. It's absolutely insane. And we're going to focus, um, we're going to set these live streams up so that we focus on a particular topic. And today that topic is NFT. So non fungible tokens. And I got a lot of people very triggered by this tweet. <laughs> I said, why would I buy an art NFT for $30,000? No, I'll Google the image, download it and set it as wallpaper for free. <laughs> I, I just wanted to trigger a few people uh, yesterday, but in the topic of discussion, because right now, why we're all discussing non-fungible tokens is because people are viewing this as the next big thing. So we know that DeFi, th this wave is hitting us right now, right? A lot of projects, DeFi projects are just taking off, going to the moon, 10X, 50X, whatnot. But a lot of investors, they're kind of fearful. They're like, okay, when is this DeFi wave going to be over? What's the next wave? And a lot of people are talking about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And in fact, if you look at it, Binance is listing Sandbox, which has to do with NFT and land sales. Um, there's a lot of talk in China. China. And this is where the East and West meets West narrative comes in, where China, they, they don't really care about DeFi. Right? They're just like NFTs is the next big thing. We talked about that not just with CZ, but also with the CoinGecko guys too. So if you're in Asia, you're kind of feeling, okay, look, what's really with this NFT wave? Is there any credence to it? So we'll do a little episode about DeFi versus NFTs in today's episode. And we're also, today's episode, we're also going to look at what's happening on coin market cap. So, well, not coin market cap, coin gecko rather. But recently prices for Bitcoin and Ethereum has fallen a slight bit. People are quite worried. If you look at it, we're dipping below 12K. <laughs> I'm smiling when I'm saying this, dipping below 12K. I mean, 12K was almost an unimaginable like six months ago, but anyways. And we've got Ethereum almost touching 400. So we'll take a look at the markets, what the take on this overall scenario is. And we'll take a look at the news as well, because on the news, we have quite a lot happening with Ethereum competitors. So a lot of Ethereum competitors are come, come, coming out, including our grant saying you know what all of this stuff that's done in ethereum that's very expensive for people we can do this cheaper our network is faster and cheaper so we'll look at what's being announced with algorand and with kind of a lot of the other ethereum competitors that are kind of shining at this current point so that's all for today's episode um if you guys are in just remember make sure you smash up those likes it really does help the channel especially with these kind of unscheduled views and unscheduled videos it really does help support this channel and i hope you guys like it i've been doing a bit more of these mostly because it just saves my time as well uh <laughs> i'll be honest this super honest here recently i've been spending a lot more time on the investing front um assets under management has gone up total value locked has gone up for my personal <laughs> stuff so i'm always on the edge when it comes to researching and being in the cryptocurrency space i'm over in over 100 chat groups right now people are like oh how do you find these projects how do you find what's going on i'm just on and i'm not wasting any single time like debating politics or anything with people i'm just like efficiently finding out as much as i can efficiently as possible but that also means it cuts down on my video producing time um if i make an offline video if it's a very short video nice cut clean it takes a uh, quite a bit of time so unfortunately i have to balance my work-life balance here so we're trying to do more live streams recently to catch up to give you guys the latest news but the down the flip side of course is that it won't be as edited so it will be a little bit longer for you guys to watch but i hope you guys enjoy i hope you guys smash up those likes thank you notification squad for jumping in right here we have already have 100 people on this unscheduled live stream make sure you guys share it also a little bit as well thank you guys so much so much for 
for the support. And before we start, of course, I want to tell you a little bit about my podcast in the most commercial voice possible. So let's check it out. So we got Bitcoin out of the box. It is my podcast. We have we're talking to different founders about what is happening in the cryptocurrency space. This is where you get the insights. And a lot of these insights we did way before everything else. And I think that's key to crypto. It's not just asking questions. I think I've been, I'm being bored, senseless, just asking people the same old questions. Really, what a founder interview is, is you're going to get a feel for what they are like as a person. And if you listen to Jeff Kredet, because he's got so much energy, you know, if you look at Trust Swap, it just blew up after this interview. And that's important. That's getting the tone, getting the sense of the feeling, getting the energy. That is key in crypto. So that's something that I'm watching out for. So you can hear this on podcast. Not all interviews on here are available on this YouTube video. So make sure you check it out. It's called Bitcoin Out of the Box. Check it out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Everything that has podcasts, it's going to have Bitcoin out of the box. All right, guys. So let's take a look at what's happening on the market just to give the kind of <sighs> commentary of what's going on. Yes, we are dipping. We dipped a little bit, especially for Ethereum. We almost touched 4,000 people were freaking out. I saw a lot of people just a little bit concerned and worried. Here's my take on it. So right now, we're entering a new almost a new bull market okay I'll, I'll say this is a bull market for me anyways right there is a lot happening but also when we're just entering that bull market there was a lot of volatility this happened 100 percent in 2017 in fact there were flash crashes in 2017 that brought ethereum to zero let's go google that up go google the ethereum flash crash it brought ethereum to zero on coinbase exchange it's crazy there were these moments where things were set up properly and it just went straight to hell and we're, we're gonna see that we're definitely gonna see that in this space so yes i am preparing for a potential pullback of maybe 20 30 percent in one day like if you're not mentally conditioned to to do that i guess you better should be at least at least be mentally ready this space is extremely volatile it's not going to be a straight arrow from there not financial advice obviously nothing on this channel is financial advice not a financial advisor but personally for me i've been preparing for that i've been preparing for that i'm not having any overly leveraged positions you know for me yield farming more has been uh, very great for diversifying what I have. And we'll talk about yield farming too. We got a lot of questions about yield farming. All of a sudden, everyone is like picking this up. When we talked about this ages ago, we were there for the first one. We were there for Wi-Fi. We were there when Wi-Fi distributed $200 million of market cap in over like seven days to people who farm. Like I'm laughing all the way to the bank right now. So anyways, we're here early. We'll talk about it. But obviously, I think this is something that you got to at least learn because a lot of projects, a lot of white papers I've been reading, they're all going to distribute tokens to yield farmers. That's like, that's not just a, just like a momentary trend. This is going to be something that's very, very heavy in crypto for a long time. So anyways, um, beyond that, let's take a look at Bitcoin as well. So Bitcoin, why people were a little bit afraid in terms of market was because there was a rejection, right? So we passed 12K. We saw that Bitcoin was moving within this little channel here. I'm going to, I call it the golden channel because whilst Bitcoin's stuck in this channel, all the altcoins are going crazy. It's the crazy altcoin market, right? If Bitcoin doesn't move too much, if it stays very stagnant, all the altcoins are out to play. That's what's happening. Bitcoin's like the big cat that carries everyone, right? And then when it's like, you know, kind of sleeping, all the mice come out like, it's fun times. So this is kind of what was happening. But towards uh, on the 17th of August, so we saw the spike up. Potentially, Bitcoin was going to make a run to 14K, 15K. People were talking all of a sudden, where can Bitcoin go? Right. But there was a sharp rejection. We got this rejection coming down here, crashing down back into this <laughs> golden zone again. So my take on this is that, yes, we... We're slowly moving up. And I feel it's kind of interesting as well. If you look at the Wall Street cheat sheet, right? I think we're all in different stages. Uh, sheet. 
like we 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 I put this question up again because this is like the most infamous infamous chart in the world, right? This is where like okay, where are we on this chart? Um, are we in? Um, okay, so we saw this exact same pattern almost during the 2017 bull run, but now when we're re-entering this, right? When we're re-entering, where are we? Are we in hope, right? Um, are we in hope here? Are we in optimism, belief, throw, euphoria? I mean, people are definitely concerned. If we're hitting euphoria, then obviously there's not much room to go up. <laughs> so this is the why this question is so great. This is why people always get also get so triggered when people ask this question is because where are we on this chart? And I think it actually differs between with where you are as a person, where you are in crypto. I mean, we got the Bitcoin maximalists, the people who only believe in Bitcoin. People feel like, I only want to touch Bitcoin, everything else is a scam. I think they're actually at hope. All right, so for everyone that's just like ignoring the altcoin space, they're at hope because Bitcoin hasn't really moved that much, to be honest, right? Relative to everything else, if you zoom out quite a bit, Bitcoin hasn't even hasn't even gone to the crazy parts yet. It's been rather tame. It's been sitting inside these channels for a while. I don't know why this loading is so slow. I mean, I mean my internet shouldn't be bad either, right? But anyways, so Bitcoin itself, you know, yes, yeah, sure, it did drop all the way down to three thousand. Yes, um, I was lucky. I managed to pick it some up at four when I was telling you guys, yo, you know, don't lose hope here, right? Moved up, sure, but. Did it really move up that much beyond what was happening in January? No, not so much. So yeah, I think we're still at hope. We're still very, very early on, especially if you look at the political climate right now. I was talking about this. This political climate right now in this world is super messed up. Like this whole US-China trade war, people banning other people's bank accounts, like just countries very hostile to each other, will need a way to transfer currency internationally. That's the beauty of Bitcoin. No one's going to be able to freeze their bank account. No one's going to be able to say, no, you can't transfer for that currency. You got to report to this now. Your keys, your crypto, right? Especially if you're, you got a good memory, you can memorize 12 words. I think this is something I've got to train soon. If you can remember those 12 words, if someone comes, smash your ledgers, you memorize those words, destroy that, you're good. No one else can take your crypto, right? That's the power of Bitcoin. Those 12 words are key. And that's why it's 12 words rather than a long digit, right? Okay, so that's the power of Bitcoin. No one can suspend it. You can't, Donald Trump can't just call a bank of Bitcoin. There's no bank of Bitcoin to call. He's like, what's the number? There is no number, right? So even she, she's like, what's the number? Call the Bitcoin guys, suspend these accounts. Who's this Satoshi guy? Find his number. Ain't gonna work. So that's the power of Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin, we're still early on. But obviously, once we're early on, there's gonna be a volatility. Now, next up, I think with the altcoin space, we're in thrill. I, I honestly think that right now, in the whole altcoin space, Uniswap dumpster diving, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there were a, a huge amount of returns. I actually came into that quite late, to be honest. The whole Uniswap thing, you know, I got in a trust swap, right? So, that's great. That's great. You know, getting trust swap on the market. That's great. You know, trust swap six cents all the way up to a dollar thirty, a dollar fifty right now, whatnot. But at the same time, there were so many people before me that got very, very rich. I've seen those DeFi chads, and they're just like very early on, boom. You know, a little bit, probably like three, four weeks earlier than me. Crazy, and they're at the point where thrill. And this is. The, one of the reasons why I say this is because a lot of people, they've been looking at what's being offered on Uniswap right now. And this is like, you know, people who've been through 2017 are like, you know what? This looks worse than 2017. Like these projects, like we're, we're at memes right now, right? We're at like pork chop, pasta. Like what's the long-term value of this? I'm like, sure, if you mine it, you can make some money, all right? But in terms of long-term value, who knows? So anyways, I think we're, that's the, that's the state where you throw euphoria, maybe there's a little bit of pullback wave and then maybe can grow a bit because I do see that the DeFi space has been bringing more value as well. So we can't discount that too. So this is the reverse argument. DeFi actually brought a lot of value. So 
And this is where I think it's best time for us to move into that DeFi versus the NFT space argument. Because I've been having this argument with a lot of people. I've been on phone calls. I've, I've literally called people for three, four hours a day, different people. And a lot of the discussion centers around, A, hey, okay, what's next? And all like, what's the value that DeFi is bringing? Because if you talk to the Chinese side, if you talk to the Asia side, people are very, very skeptical about DeFi. There, there's a lot of, a lot of skepticism because like I explained earlier with DeFi in China, they tried to take that DeFi wave earlier. They tried to do that. There, there was the DeForce hack. I mean, I'm sure we all read about it on the news here, but people in China were directly affected by this where one of the smart contracts got breached into people's total value locked, almost got stolen, right? It's in fact, it did get stolen until the, the, the security guys found the hacker and said, you know what? Give that back. All right, give that back or I don't know. I don't know what else they can say, but I don't think I can say it on YouTube. But anyways, that's why they're very skeptical because people were burnt, right? But the interesting thing about in the DeFi space right now, there are substantial changes that DeFi changed about the whole landscape. First of all, they tackled directly centralized finance. Yesterday, we had a great talk between C5 versus DeFi. Um, if you look at it on a box mining channel, it was between Orion guys and KuCoin, or girls, sorry, girls, Orion girls and KuCoin girls. That was great. And so this was a great video to watch if you want to watch that, the C5 versus DeFi. But I think one of the things here that's kind of interesting with or, uh, Orion as well is like, their protocol, they can just use it. They can directly tap into the resources, the liquidity resources of centralized finance, bring that onto the platform, whether or not the exchange wants it. Very, very interesting. But the whole case about DeFi and what makes DeFi powerful is that it woke up all the centralized finance exchanges. All of a sudden, every C5 exchange is dying to list a project. All of a sudden, before in centralized finance, you know, Binance, KuCoin, whatever, whatever exchange, they were charging very, very high listing fees. They were not listing projects because they could potentially make a lot of money on listing. And then they were also a little bit wary as well. Maybe they were a little bit cautious about, you know, new coins coming in. All of a sudden, when this DeFi wave kicked off uniswap came on board people were like oh we need to do it now it's like oh uniswap listing is good enough there's so much liquidity on uniswap that's great we don't need anymore bye 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 cfi and then even worse i mean i saw this yesterday with trust swap right there was so much distrust with centralized finance and centralized finance was doing some really shady stuff super super shady so let me see if i can still find that tweet for you guys it happened with trust swap so uh let's see let's see let's see uh okay it's just deleted now but with with trust swap like one of the things that encounter, people encountered was that they couldn't withdraw money from the bkey exchange right and why why couldn't people withdraw coins from the bkey exchange it was because bkey was not selling actual or listing actual coins from on exchange they were just saying okay look we like this project we'll just artificially put some numbers out there. That's very likely what happened. And then when the coin goes up, they don't. Um, people want to withdraw, they don't, just don't have those coins. They just probably have to buy off the open market. And this is also what people were complaining about some coins on MXC and other centralized exchanges. Essentially, these centralized exchanges, they don't have the power, or not the power, they, they have the power to list any coin they want and input any quantity they want. If you guys saw with the whole Polkadot incident, people were trading Polkadot before Polkadot even launched, right? Good and bad. You can speculate, great, but at the same time, what if these exchanges can't find that particular coin, right? They can't source that particular coin. You're putting yourselves into a lot of risk. And the, the power of DeFi means you can transparently see what's available. You're actually getting the delivered product. Anyway, so that's very powerful, and I think I think a lot of people who are doubting the, the whole DeFi space, they've they've got their heads in a tizzy. They they're probably too like PT. They have too much PTSD from maybe DeForce or maybe something that happened. They can't see the innovations that are coming into place here. I think right now, even for something like Compound or Cream, the the ability for a, a person to deposit. So we got Compound. You, you can completely de deposit a coin that you don't 
need or you have, you can yeah, you say if you want to have bat, wrap Bitcoin, USDT, or you can go on cream and you can say, look, if I have one coin that I don't really need right now, like we can, you have Wi-Fi or Lend or Link. If you have these coins, all right, you have Link. I'm not using it. Lend it out. You get APY on that. Why not? You get APY. You can borrow another coin to speculate. All of a sudden, people are saying, oh, hey, this is pretty useful. So anyways, this it's extremely powerful. And we just got a comment that says from Shobo Bag and says MXC is one of the worst. I think MXC, um, they're trying to be overly aggressive and there were certain withdrawal issues. Yeah, don't just be very careful. There is liquidity on MXC. I don't think it's on the list of the worst offenders, but I did hear there was quite a lot of rumors that people couldn't withdraw. So just be careful. Anyways, let's so so that's take a DeFi. I'm actually still extremely um I'm not just uh, I'm I'm believing DeFi has a huge play here. Like if you've been in the whole yield farming space, you'll realize that the power of DeFi is just crazy. Especially if you can be able to borrow like the the way I set everything up, like I I have Ethereum, I collateralized it on Maker DAO, I pulled out the Dai stable coin. So now I have Ethereum exposure, but at the same time I have liquidity in the form of Dai. Then I deposited a Dai into Y curve, and now I got the Y curve tokens out. Then with the Y curve tokens, I put that in Vault, and I also put that in the DAO for Curve. And you're like, oh crap, you can do so much with this stuff, right? So this is just total insanity of how much you know it can do. And you can realize it sounds crazy and it might screw up. I mean, that's why I'm not putting everything into it but at the same time you're starting to see the power of all this coming through so i feel like there's still there's a lot of things that people if if they are ptsd from early on especially chinese if they have ptsd from DeFi, exit that mindset exit that out but at the same time china's actually getting very hot on nfts non-fungible tokens and this is like the next big thing right so if you think about it there is a certain power with these tokens and there are a few interesting. So let me go to the tweet, which I route a lot of people up. Um, this, this one, let's see over here. So right now there's a lot of people selling non-fungible token artwork. Interesting. All right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they're selling that for a lot of money. So, one of the examples here would be, you know, this whole NFT space. You have like games that are doing this. You got rare PPs. You got a bunch of other ones. I mean, Crypto Kitties, you guys all heard of, but those are games. But now there's moving that into artwork. Mona Lisa, someone was commenting. I think it was Leo who commented on this one. You know, what about artwork? What about selling this $30,000 artwork and, uh, you know, maybe get to have partial ownership of it? The, the only issue, of course, is that how do you differentiate a artwork, right? Art, um, it was in master. Let me just post, post, post that up as well. I'll say masterpieces. So, uh, all right, so yeah, so there are a few of these. So it's like Mona Lisa, Picasso Bowl. There was like these NFTs are extremely expensive. Your ownership of it. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I had this website prepared, right? I have this website prepared, just that I can't find it right now. It's um it's crypto masterpieces or something. Just give me one second, let me try to find it. All right, there you go. That makes sense. Crypto masterpieces. So yeah, own a digital masterpiece, own art on a blockchain. That's like the stupidest thing I've ever seen, right? Like these are masterpieces that were created ages ago. They're valuable because they're the originals. Now that you scan it in, took a photograph of it, and then you made an NFT out of it, doesn't mean you can sell it for $30,000, right? This is the, I don't know what sort of delusional thinking people are under for this like this is the like what art collector would want to collect jpegs like yo 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 guys well check this out check this out i got a jpeg for mona lisa i paid 30k for check that out man this is so cool 
Like, in what world would that make sense? Like, people would be like, oh. <laughs> idiot. It's like, it's almost as bad as buying an iPhone button. I remember there was an app that cost $30,000 and then there was a button for it. And they're like, oh, this app, this button costs 30K. Come on, guys, buy it. Because it's like the latest, coolest thing. So I feel like there's this disconnect, right? There's this delusion that people are under for NFTs that an image can do. An image can't do. You have to have some form of functionality. And this is where the real argument comes in, right? This is where I'm going to stop making fun of stuff. I mean, this is, all right, this is where I'm like, okay, look, for certain ideas, you got to start exit exiting that delusion. But, you know, you can't just have a simple image. That's just not good enough. Crypto masterpieces, art masterpieces, art collecting, I don't think that's going to fly unless it conveys some form of ownership. Sure. If you own the actual Mona Lisa, every time a photograph, someone photographs of it, you make one cent. Why not, right? Paris, you go to the Louvre, people snapping photos. Oh my God, that's like what? $3,000 per hour if people pay you that, right? Obviously. Now that's, that's the harder part. Like if that, if there's copyright ownership, if there's intellectual property involved, if there's some sort of gameplay involved, if it's actually used in a video game, yes, that will be a different story. I will be jumping up and down, you know, extremely ec ecstatic for it. And this is why I'm definitely looking at NFTs, but I'm coming in with a very critical mindset. I think that's the, the key here. I think it's like, how do you manage to achieve all this? We've seen attempts in the past to try to use an NFT to convey intellectual property, but then you also run into some securities laws too. So yeah, so recently I've been looking at a few of these NFT things. You guys know I'm extremely big onto engine, so they're all about gaming um, and so yeah, so that makes sense. You know, if you can play with your NFT in a video game space, that makes a lot of sense. They already have the marketplace up so you can start selling these items. And eventually, yeah, if there's a very good video game that can you can use this NFT in, I've got my own NFTs. These are just images. <laughs> so you no, know, I'm not trying to sell these images for like $30,000, but I'm trying to sell them for like 20 cents. That makes sense, right? If you want to collect a fun collectible image, you want to collect like something, some sort of collect for box mining and if we kind of make some use case or purpose out of it that's kind of what i'm testing with all these mfts i have this whole mt set box mining collectibles check it out yo it's been created ages ago it was an experiment from two years ago uh-huh i was there very early we have seven thousand holders holy crap i'm pretty good sorry sorry for patting my back i need to be humble and honest but i'm pretty good i've got seven thousand holders if this was a cryptocurrency if this was like a shit coin right now i'm in I'm good shape right anyways guys so so yeah so it's been now for two years lots of holders eight different assets on this we got some fun little images and stuff and you know, like i think that that's kind of the correct pricing you want for these right like they, they're locking up 17 dollars. this is the most expensive one it's a special one i gave out for free too. I gave these out for free. See, this is this is what makes sense, right? That's fun collectible thing. I give it out to you for free. Whatever. I'm not selling for thirty thousand dollars. Anyways, uh, my rant's over. But yes, yeah, so I'm looking at that. I'm also looking at Vim World. So yes, we did after after that controversial tweet. Um, I did actually talk to the guys behind Eight Hour Foundation. And we're looking at Vim World again and just seeing like, okay, look, they're making intelligent NFTs. Okay, what's an intelligent NFT? That's interesting. Like maybe an NFT that can grow over time. That could be interesting. Like maybe like it's in a video game, you can grow, you can feed it, you can take it into other video games. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll take a look at it. So anyway, so I've been looking a lot at that, at this whole NFT space, at engine, at um, everything that's going on. I mean, shout out to Leo for creating uh, art exhibits and figuring out how you can fractionally own art or maybe have a real painting and then have the ownership also on your phone. Not the coolest idea, but I guess as a start, you have to have something a little bit more than that. But anyways, that's, um, that's kind of cool. So anyways, uh, <laughs> Uh, we got Juliana Kimba Juniors says, already got your NFT for two years. Congratulations, guys. Nice. That's awesome. You guys got, are good collectors.
like these NFTs went up quite a bit. Like I didn't expect that. I gave these out completely for free. Like they're just fun collectibles. This is the whole set. If you guys are interested in more and for me to continue on this experiment, sure. I'm definitely not going to sell it for $30,000. Okay. All right. But if you guys are interested in collecting these cards or having some cool cards, tell me, tell me, tell me, shoot me some, shoot me some ideas. Um, this might be something fun. We might, we might continue this. It might be very interesting. And then maybe finding some further use cases for it. that's, that's kind of more important. I think that's the, that's the core part of this. So anyways, that's, that's my take on NFTs and DeFi. I think DeFi is extremely useful. It's more proven. NFTs are still getting there, but we need to find a good use case. I'm very, very critical. I don't believe in just tokenizing an art and calling it a day, especially if it's done by summer bees or one of the big, you know, art houses that makes no sense whatsoever. But if it has a practical use case, if it has some sort of functionality, maybe we can grow it. Maybe it's in in multiple video games. That's when it really does matter. All right. So moving on. So we have some news as well. So first of all, yeah, people are freaking out. They're looking at Bitcoin prices. These are like the most popular articles on Coin Telegraph right now. But yet again, it's a case where people who are new to this space they don't understand. There's like a lot of volatility going forward. We also got John McAfee. Um, he, he's, he's ghosting his own project. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, um, there's a project called ghost, um, that John McAfee was like, oh, he's making his own privacy coin. Well, John seems to be abandoning ghosting his own project right now. I think this isn't very, this is definitely not unexpected. Um, absolutely saw this coming. I think it's, I mean, John McAfee's good popcorn, right? It's just, it's just fun to watch. It's entertaining. This is like crypto entertainment. I wouldn't take it too seriously. I wouldn't touch any project that he touches, but you know, it's fun. It's fun. Maybe I'm a meme. Maybe I'm me. Maybe like you, you guys really care about ghosts, but like, I'm like, I'm like, this is completely ex expected. Hopefully he'll live up to his word. Maybe he'll change his mind and eat his own dick in 2020, in which case I will respect him. If Bitcoin doesn't pass, a million dollars by the end of this year and he does eat his own dick like he promised to three years ago i will respect him that'd be like yo you delivered respect all right moving on to algorand so this is quite interesting so i've been following algorand for some time because it's one of those blockchain 3.0 projects not just one of them it is the blockchain 3.0 project silvio macaulay the creator of algorand he's like he is balls deep. He's like one of the original OGs of the whole cryptocurrency, not the crypto, the whole cryptography scene. So having invented a lot of the technologies that are powering crypto right now, like being one of the original inventors of this, obviously he's got a lot to say. And, you know, he also won the Turing Prize, which is like the Nobel Prize of computing it's just like it's a it's a pretty big deal so anyway so in terms of algorand what they're doing now is they're shifting focus to decentralized finance so before with algorand they have a very fast way of sending cryptocurrencies around great but at the same time in terms of the projects developing on it not too much but right now they're expanding what they're doing with their smart contract platform. They're having a new layer onto it, which allows for a much more efficient smart contract at scale. So this is very interesting because you know we're meeting those problems on Ethereum where it costs a lot of money to interact with these smart contracts. And it's kind of interesting how this newsletter really directly targets everything that is quite hot in crypto, be it auctions you got auction security tokens crowdsourcing decentralized exchanges transparent banking so what he's basically saying is that they can do all of this right and this is going to be the interesting battle to come where with algorand with all these new projects they're much faster and it's going to be speed versus community i think that's kind of what's happening on ethereum ethereum has one of the biggest communities It's also one of the ogs there i'm not trying to diss ethereum but i think in this network this ability to expand the smart contract platform is interesting so recently i've definitely been looking at Elron. you guys probably know that been looking at algorand Hashgraph, and also some projects like even ontology looking at basically how we can scale this and of course binance smart chain obviously obviously right so 
with all the, this stuff coming on and with all this changes coming on, people are looking for cheaper transactions. People don't want to play yield farming and be like, oh, I spent like $500 today, which I literally did in one of these days. Like when gas fees were at 200 guay, you just have to bite the bullet and spend 200 guay. That's just the way it is, right? Because unfortunately you have to move those funds around. Um, yeah, and otherwise you're losing out on yield. So it's a case where we need something faster. We need something cheaper. And hopefully we'll see how Algorand does. I mean, this seems to be a pretty big launch. So I'm pretty excited actually for following it. A lot of people haven't been following too much about what's going on with this blockchain 3.0, but <laughs> that's, that's, not the, that's not the case with me. I feel like that's kind of important right now. We've also got loop ring or nah. I think loop ring needs to be covered at another angle because loop ring, um, how do you say this? Um, there's this way to scale Ethereum that doesn't require Ethereum 2.0. And I think you brought it up at a very good time. So how do you, can you allow Ethereum to run smart contracts without the release of Ethereum 2.0? And that's what Loopring is trying to do with a lot of few other projects. And I think this really deserves some attention. So I'll do that for as a special episode for another episode. Anyways, a big shout out to Saul also as well for Crypto Rev. DeFi rep rather. So we recently got an interview. I know this looks like the weirdest image of me, but we got a Q and A that's kind of, they asked me some, some Q and A stuff. So I'm right now, I'm person of the week, <laughs> apparently. That's great. With this creepy little face, this person of the week, this little creepy little person being this <laughs> person of the week. But anyways, um, we covered a lot about how I got into crypto, what my take about everything is and kind of what's happening with everything. So if you guys want to check it out a little bit about how I got to be where I am today, I guess this little weird guy making YouTube videos, um, check the article out. Anyways, okay, moving on. So we have a lot of few questions on yield farming. I promise you guys to talk a little bit about yield farming. This new tool is super useful. This was recommended on our Telegram channel. If people want to get started, this tool is super, super useful. You have, wow, yeah, you have your APYs here. So this is your annual percentage yield. This is what the provider is. This is what the pool is. It tells you which ones are hot right now. Obviously sorted by annual percentage return. Holy crap, $8,000 here. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slam down the brakes a little bit as well because these pools are extremely dangerous. So anything that is a slash, all right, anything that's like spaghetti, CCR, YY curve, slash pasta, these are extremely dangerous because of something called impermanent loss. If it's just a pure pool, so you probably have to like go um, scroll down a little bit, you know, go down to the hundreds um, here, not the thousands, not the thousand percent APY. It's got to scroll down to like the little bottom bits here, you know, maybe something like a USDT vault, USDC vault. These are the far and the yields that don't have the risk of buying a particular currency. So this is actually very important to identify. If you're a yield farmer and you're yield farming this, obviously this is something that I was tempted to do. I mean, I, and also I've got um, schooled hardcore by this. So anything that's a slash, essentially means that there's a risk. You have to take up one of these coins. You have to not only take up one of the coins, you have to be providing liquidity to one of these pools. And this is even more dangerous because now you're market making for that particular coin and you're going to be in a lot of risk situations. So they also have this impermanent loss primer. I'm also going to do a video on impermanent loss as well. This is real guys. And one of the biggest example about this is that I am also mining uh, yield farming based. So yesterday base was around almost $550. So, you know, started mining around here. The returns were great. You are getting like 5% per hour or something, something ridiculous like that, right? Great, 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 bam. It gets hit, it hits you in the face, right? When, when base drops by like half 50%, all right, all of a sudden, all your funds that's in the pool is also being used to buy that dip, right? So now you're having more and more exposure to based and also based is losing money. So if it was a 50-50 pool, like the one I was in with Uniswap, then yeah, you lost literally 30% of your 
capital if you're of your mining capital right there and then yes you know i'm saying this really easily because i didn't mind with that much and i think you know based has something long term but i was like touching it only with like around 5k i wasn't touching it with a big bank or with anything i was just like super super small and that's the thing that's the thing we have to be very very watchful of so with with yield farming there's better tools now, which is great. We can track out what's happening, what's out there. There are so there are so many farms. Uh, it's insane, guys. But at the same point, just be extremely, extremely careful. Like, um, like high yields, high returns incur are usually there because of super, super, super high risk. So it's a case where, you know, like. The way the way I put it yesterday was that a lot of people were saving money in um, centralized finance resources like those apps. And it goes to show that a lot of people want to type like they want to go to Celsius or maybe even Binance. I mean, I think heck, Binance was pushing notifications out to me. I'm, I'm not sure if we can find it here, but Binance was pushing notifications to me to say, "Yo, save my your crypto here. There's a new DeFi option with like 10 percent annual percentage yield. Save it with Binance." How does Binance use that money? I don't know, but you know, like uh, I think there are people who want to trust centralized entities. Binance might be a little bit better because you know they have an exchange. So if they if they blow up, if they screw up, then they have to answer for that, right? They have a whole exchange there. But if it's just Celsius or maybe a small startup, like a lot of people are asking me, you know, what about Celsius? What about DigiFox? What about Cake DeFi? And I don't want to throw shade on these projects, but at the same time, there's like a lot of risk because these projects, they might not be secured by any sort of insurance. And also they're centralized. So you don't know what they're doing with those funds, right? You have no idea. So this is a situation where transparency is key. You need them to be more transparent and have records. And also if they have any form of deposit records, at least show them to you. So I'm not trying to completely diss it, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, look, it makes for me at the very least, it makes more sense for me to know what's going on. So at least yield farming makes more sense to me that way. So anyways, that's, that's how to go. We got Glenbrook Jr. says, "Do you have a tutorial about yield farming on your website at Box Mining? Don't know what it is. So, if you don't know what it is, I guess learn about it. We don't we don't have too many guides right now um, at this current point, but um, we have like split guides on to say like what is um, CRV, what is uh, Yam Finance, like this whole Yam thing going on. We also have the early, very, very early coverage of what was going on with Compound and then also with Wi-Fi 1 and Wi-Fi 2, like both of these big, big yield farming projects, we both have covered, we all have coverage for that. So it's just double check Wi-Fi. Yeah, Wi-Fi yield farming tool with urine pool. So it gives you a little bit of what's going on. I mean, we covered this super early, all the way in July when it first started. So, you know, con congrats to anyone who followed it. But um, yeah, so it's they're not full guys. They're kind of like a rough hint. But the key thing here about the uh, yield farming is that you got to be quite good at crypto, to be honest. Um, it's not super easy. It's not super easy, but... I don't know at least at least know what it is. I think that's the key here. Um, I know it's starting to get super hot with the mainstream community. Um, I will try to make some rough guides about what's happening, but at the same time, just be very very careful about what's going on. All right, Digifox is a smart contract wallet with partner integrations. Is it? Is it? Is it? Anyways, I know some people really love Data Dash. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit on Data Dash that much. Love him too. He's been great. Um, he's been still making content. That's awesome. All right. Um, Angela Wang says, "Box money from um, Sing Lian Liu. Have you had a chance to look at Flow Protocol?" So when I took a quick glance at Flow, it seems like more of those game economic game types protocols. So it's one of those coins that was like, oh, um, it, it felt like uh, Ample Forth. They're trying to do like this type of game, same category of this economic game. Not sure if there's any long-term value in that, but people love it. So it took off, which is great because I was like, a friend told me about Flow very, very early on. I've already made my money. I think I already did like a 10, 15X on Flow. So yeah, 
take it as you wish. Um, it's one of those projects that's, I knew it was an economic game. I bought it as an economic game. I sold it as an economic game and I've got already got my principal back. So I'll just be honest about it. Like, I'm not going to hype it up and say, oh my God, it's the next thing since sliced bread. I don't really think it's the next thing since sliced bread, but some people love it. So there you go. Um, we got Modi Funstar says, could you please do a quick step-by-step -step video demonstrating how to use Anchor Cloud Platform sometime? Sure, absolutely. There's a lot of staking there. I've recently also, uh, let me see if I can log into Anchor here. Let me, E-N-K-R. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lots of staking going on there. And um, I'll show you guys what I have so far. So um, let me see if it's, let me see if I have my, uh, uh, oh no, I don't, I don't have it logged in here, but I'll show you guys later. But something that's cool about Anchor is that you're, you have like a one click node formation where you can like uh, stake different cryptocurrencies, not just stake, but you can run nodes for different cryptocurrencies. And there's a few like cool hacks as well. I'll teach you guys. Um, yeah. Uh, you can basically like start a Ethereum Medela node. You can start Binance Smart Chain. And thank you guys also. If you guys have been helping me out with starting the Binance Smart Chain validator, that's that was on Anchor, and that's almost launched. It's almost. I'll be like the box validator on on Binance Smart Chain coming up soon. So yeah, that was that's all on. Um, anchor so yeah i'll do a step-by-step -step guide soon i just don't have the time to be honest guys um stuff like this takes like a video honestly it takes three to four hours and that three to four hours could be used for me to do either research investing or doing something else and unfortunately for me right now that's a lot more profitable so i'm um, actually unfortunately for everyone right now it's a lot more profitable to be investing in crypto or to be researching crypto during that time just i'll just be honest i'll, I'll say it out there like um like i've been very motivated recently uh, i don't want to be too greedy if i say this i know some people will be too greedy but recently i've been trying to follow a lot of people and a lot of the crypto ogs they're making like five to six figures per day on trading coins or something crazy like that um yeah it really made me think look okay i need to be pushing myself a lot more aggressively here um like yeah why can't i make a lot more why can't i make 10 times more but obviously don't be too greedy right like i'm controlling my greed too um i mean it's so easy to go full gambling if you hear that you're like oh man i'm like i go full gambling and then you can win some money but that's not the way you want to go you want to pursue it so that you're making consistent gains with as least risk as possible and uh, you know you got to constantly push yourself to like for me right that's what i'm doing i'm pushing myself to do that learning more talking to more getting a better strategy, learning from my mistakes from 2017, just overall improving to a point where, yeah, then I don't have to worry about finances ever again. All right, so, um, Jordan Fader says, I'm earning 37% APY with incognito private sidechain and so many other ways to generate yield. Exactly, it's crazy. But you just have to be making sure that when you're generating yield, um, you know, uh, uh, yeah, just, you just don't put yourself under impermanent loss risk. That's pretty huge. That is pretty huge. Um, we got this E tambourine says, Angela, is Michael changed his um, time from Friday to Thursday now? No, this is an extra stream. I just like, I just felt bad for not making a video yesterday yet again. I'm like, actually, I did make a video. Um, it was the, um, the interview with KuCoin and Orion. But I feel like I constantly want to make videos every day. Like I, I have all these brilliant ideas. I'm like, oh, NFT versus um, DeFi and just make this video out. But then if I make it as a normal video, like a normal release video, it just takes too much time. So I'm just doing it as a live stream and kind of covering the content. So if it's too long for you guys, do tell me. But anyways, uh, that was kind of fun. And that's kind of how it's going on. Um, G J G got G says, uh, are you still keen on PLT? So Plutus DeFi actually recovered quite well. So like you guys said, the AF, um, I told you guys PLT, um, so I bought the dip. I bought the dip a little bit too early. So I bought the dip going from, uh, Plutus 
Plutus, Plutus. Yeah, so I bought the dip roughly between 20, like 29 cents and all the way down to 20 cents. Um, then I was like, I kept dipping and I was like, okay, can I get more? But anyways, at a certain point um, here, I kind of took some profit. So yes, it did push beyond the price that I bought Plutus for, thank goodness. I, I guess the FUD is over. Like FUD waves are crazy right now. People, people are like both hype waves and FUD waves are crazy and that's a market motion, right? So I took some profit. I still have Plutus. Uh, but yet again, they need to start delivering now. That's the key point. Now, now that the speculation phase is over, the price establishment is over. Now they need to start delivering. So that's where you need to follow up on. Uh, uh, Putinsky says, why the heck would you worry about your financial future with five to six digits profits per day, four weeks of work and you're set for life, LOL. Um, I guess. But then you're hearing people like with like ridiculous amounts of money. You're like, okay, maybe I want to have ridiculous amounts of money. Those are that sounds pretty fun, right? So I guess it's partially greed. Um, you know, uh, yeah, pretty much. Like to be honest, like I said on this channel before, like personally for me, I have quite a long runway uh, with everything that I'm doing here. I'm actually very secure. I don't really. That's why, like, I can just take some time off, right? But this year, since coronavirus is here, I'm just like, you can push yourself a little bit harder. Why don't you? You know, why not, right? You know, if you want something cool in life in the future. I mean, kids are also expensive, right? Kids are like seven digits or something like that, right? So, <laughs> um, you gotta think about it like that. It, it depends on how you think about it, right? So, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's see comments. I think I covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover today. Um, we got Potinsky says, dream big, baby. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so, we got Jordan says, I make 20K a year. So, yeah, you're set for a life. Man, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for getting into um, yield farming very early. Um, and I got into trust swap very early. I should definitely cover them a bit more. I think it's one of those projects that move fast. And I was very like, I I knew moving fast was important in this space, but then at the same time, I didn't know how important it was. Like the speed at which trust swap moves all of a sudden, you know, it's crazy, right? So first of all, like just following trust swap for a while, First of all, Beaky Exchange really tried to screw over people from TrustSwap, but immediately Jeff responded. You know, um, he was just like, why? Why Why is the withdrawals taking so long? Two hours later, they finally fixed it. So it's all about putting pressure, right? Putting social pressure on these exchanges not to be scammy, first of all. So that's protecting your own community. But also, recently, TrustSwap, the launchpad is going crazy. They're also doing a lot of tr um, tr airdrops. So SoftLink, apparently, I'm not even sure what this is but they're just dropping coins onto trust trust with token holders so all of a sudden you see that momentum going on where now people want to tap into that community because that community is so hot and so awesome right so it's it's kind of crazy it's kind of crazy that everything is happening so fast now trust watch already has their if you guys aren't up to date yet but trust has their own or incubating platform called trust swap launchpad they're launching chain games on there they're launching another very hot project very soon so all of a sudden you can see the application and use case immediately come into play with speed and with like efficiency so yeah like it's crazy it's crazy in this space so that's important anyways guys obviously you know you guys know i'm quite biased uh, but i did join the trust web advisor as an advisor for a reason not because of the money it's also because i want them to succeed i knew jeff you know it's kind of funny right um Jeff is someone I knew in Bali, right? We worked out, we're in the gym. Like I knew he had energy. I knew he's from some guy, someone that you want to invest your time in. And this whole bull run just taught me that, yes, absolutely. You know, he was down at some times, right? He rolled out the waves. He was doing one up and like, it, it was not seeing the success it should have seen. And, uh, um, I was commenting on this too. Um, you know, there was a time when I was like, oh, I, I talked to him. I'm like, yo, you know, uh, I, I do want to support your project, right? Like, I want to support what you're doing. And luckily I did because um, it's one of my 20 X's of this year. Um, yeah, I knew him at a time when, yeah, he wasn't doing super well. 
but he had the energy, had the strength, he had the determination, and then he managed to push both his projects up like crazy amounts. Both TrustSwap and um, Uptrend are one of the biggest success stories of this year, at least for me anyways. So I, I know it's a little bit selfish, self-congratulating myself, but at the same time, I feel like in 2017, I didn't have this confidence. Like in 2017, I didn't know who to pay attention to. I mean, this is a big problem. And just it's just being naive, being stupid, being young. I mean, I interviewed a lot of people. Some of them sound really great. Some of them sound amazing. But then some of them, the same people who sound amazing, might be total scammers. They they might completely fail you. They'll just tell you what you want to hear. This is a big problem. Like that's just the honest truth. Like a lot of people told me what I wanted to hear. I asked the questions, and I already knew what answers I wanted to get, and they just repeated that to me, and then that didn't work out very well. Rather, you want to find people that pay attention to you, even if maybe things aren't going well. That they, They're real friends. You want to find real friends in this space. You want to find a really good community. You want to find people who are aggressive when they need to be. They're generous when they need to be, and they're greedy when they need to be. Not the other way around. There are some projects that are greedy when they need to be generous, and then generous when they need to be greedy. It's all about timing and pacing, and uh, it goes to show that strong characters in this space really went out. So anyways, I've been paying a lot more attention to Cream with Jeffrey Huang. I feel like he's got a lot of energy there. I've been paying a lot, I guess maybe I like Jeff's a lot. So both Jeffrey Huang and Jeffrey Kardekas, I'm paying a lot of attention to. So just realized that just now. But anyways, two Jeffs. Um, paying a lot of attention to new projects in the whole DeFi space. I think it's still relatively untapped still in terms of good projects that's going out. And uh, I definitely appreciate all you guys on this channel as well. I think um, this whole channel, this whole community, and one of the reasons why I'm not giving up YouTube making or you know I've been making YouTube videos for the past three years is because of this community here. I really, really appreciate what you guys are doing. I want to help you guys. And at the same time, this whole community helps me a lot as well. Even these tools, they're already provided to me by a lot of my community members, especially um, on Telegram. I know currently the Telegram group is closed, but we're going to reopen that up next week. So make sure you stay tuned, click that notification bell. We'll have have an opening window for new members. This is just a good. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, I'm just like dry throat. It's just a great way to prevent spam. The, the channel went really well. The whole channel went private. Um, we're not accepting any new members for now. But what's interesting is that the moment we stopped accepting new members, the quality of the discussion just went straight up. Like I can start asking questions and feeling what gauging what people think and we get truthful answers there. So that was pretty damn awesome. So yeah, it's pretty cool guys. So guys, um, apologies if you can't get in. I know a few people were trying to get into the Telegram group. We're going to reopen that up next week. So stay tuned, stay notified onto this channel. We've got Ryan Tases. Um, everyone appreciate you too, Michael. Awesome guys, awesome. I hope this like... Um, I'm being super blunt this year, so you know this this is pretty pretty darn crazy. And we got Shobo Bagginses. Those were my big bags this year. One up swap and Ava missed Wi-Fi. Doesn't matter. You know if you miss something, there's no need to freak out. Like this is crypto. It's gonna come back soon too. But at this m most important, at least for me, is protecting my principal. If your principal is gone, if you do a 0.1x. <laughs> Principle is gone, right? You just have to structure it out so that even if you have, like, say, a bad run, like, say, if you have like 10 0.1 X's, you're still alive, right? That's important. That's important. I think, I think there's so many angry people. I see so many angry investors who just go all in one project, you know, balls in, balls deep, you know, let's go big or go home, baby. You know, we, we see that mentality all the time. And then like they, then, then maybe one of those projects get wrecked and they just get completely screwed. So not financial advice. I just seen that mentality a lot, like some, some very, very like angry people, but you just got to learn how to deal with that. Right? Like I definitely got a pulled rug this year. Like, like last three weeks, I definitely had a pull rug where like I threw some money down on a project that I thought might be something that could potentially make a very fast run. Zero, right? Like boom, pulled rug, project disappeared, founders ran away with the money. <laughs> Happens. Not salty about it, made a lot more everywhere else, but just be careful. Just be careful. Like if, if I went all in on that, I'll be like crying in a corridor right now. Like, <laughs> what a scanner. Am I a 
psychotic police. <laughs> no, man, it's just like you got to figure out what's happening. You got to know, understand the risks. You got to make sure you're just top of the game and that's how to win. So anyways, guys, um, thank you guys so much for watching today. We'll do more questions and answers. We'll have, um, you know, questions that coins people want to talk about, etc. I think this, these live streams are really great. Tomorrow we have a live stream too. So these are our live stream times for the day. So check that out with these live streams. So we're going to do that uh, tomorrow as well. So both today and tomorrow we got live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching as well. We'll have um, some more content going through and seeing what is happening. We got a question about what are your de best DeFi gems. I'll talk about them in the next video. We'll do a DeFi gems video. Oh my God, it's DeFi gems. Just joking, guys. Uh, there's a lot I'm looking into. Um, in fact, just off the top of my head, I'm mean, looking into some new projects right now as well. I'm looking into Ramp, R-A-M-P. Super, super highly contested right now. I'm her hearing it's like super sold out also. Um, looking to OIN, Oren. Looking into um, surprisingly E first. Uh, I saw Ivan on tech being into that. I saw Fomosaurus really into E first. Um, one of the early guys. I'm looking into those projects. Um, there's also Black Hole. Um, there's a Black Hole liquidity provider that was, seems quite interesting. Um, yeah, reading so many white papers recently. So it's a little bit crazy. I can't even remember all of them. There's like weird names like Union. There's another Union one. But anyways, it's, I, I'm trying to structure my time between what is available on the market and what is going to launch. And then you have the whole, you know, whole like how to even get into those projects issue. But anyways, that's a story for another time. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Smash up those likes. Be part of that notification squad. Teachers are going out as well. So make sure like the last video that qualifies for video, I think you still just type notification squad for the, for the last one. For, for this video over here um, and then you'll be in pretty good shape. So yeah, do that type of notification squad thing here and it's doing well. So guys, thank you guys so much for your support guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you guys next stream. Bye-bye.